So it's been like four weeks and two days now and I've got a follow-up appointment at the hospital um, just for another x-ray they want to make sure that the bone's set okay but they're expecting me to turn up there in a leg brace and crutches so it's going to be interesting my name. Car is filthy. Has it moved for five weeks? <sighs> Not interested. Oh, sick. So now we're into week five. Last week you saw I went to the hospital and here the x-rays. And I was a little surprised to be honest. As you can see, there's still quite a visible gap um, between the two parts of my kneecap. And that means that the hard callus hasn't formed. So maybe I was getting a bit ahead of myself, but the way my knee was feeling, like it didn't hurt to touch, I could move my kneecap around. I kind of thought that the hard callus would be well underway but evidently the soft callus is still there so I'm still at the beginning of the reparative phase. The doctor mentioned that it was good progress and that he was uh, happy with how things were going. Booked me for another x-ray in two months and just advised me to keep doing what I was doing. Obviously knowing that the soft callus is still quite soft and malleable it made me a bit nervous to start pushing into rehab the way I was doing so I felt like I had to ease off a little bit. So I took a step back for a few days and just started to ease off the intensity a little bit. Focus a bit more on range of motion and quality of movement rather than just trying to build up the strength back in the knee. So last week I mentioned that I felt like I had to learn how to use the muscle again and figure out how to, like, how to engage it when I was walking, how to engage it while I was doing rehab. So while I was doing a bit of research into that, I discovered something called AMI, which is arthrogenic muscular inhibition and as I was pretty much describing myself it's a reaction of the body to trauma logically to protect the joint to stop any further damage happening but it's not something that just disappears without any effort and in the research I was doing it showed that some people even a year after an injury such as like an ACL tear or some kind of knee injury were still suffering from this AMI and it made sense like this is what's happening to my knee so then I got into researching how do you treat this and as a first step to re-engage the neural link I'm reading that isometric contractions are good. So as opposed to eccentric or concentric contraction an isometric contraction is just where the muscle isn't lengthening or shortening during a contraction, it's just holding still. So at this stage I've gotten rid of the leg raises, the squats and the lunges and I'm just going to focus on the isometric contractions just until I get some more strength in there and also some more range of motion. So that's still going to put a load into the kneecap and stimulate the bone repair process but it's not going to overload it which I was a bit nervous of before. So the way I was reading it you need to secure your lower leg so you can't engage your hamstrings or your glutes in any of this motion. Um, so using something like this log behind my leg it's ensuring that this movement is purely quad focused. So also being careful not to move my hips back and sit down into a squat which obviously brings hamstrings and glutes into it. I'm holding it for 45 seconds. But since I've been doing this, I feel like my, my recovery sped up actually quite a lot. It's only been a few days, but the range of motion is feeling easier. And yesterday I even tried a jog, which didn't feel too bad. So what I'm doing seems to be working. Um, I'm happy with my progress. I keep meeting my goals. Like week two was just to walk without crutches. Week three was to get into a little bit of bodyweight exercises and start getting the movement in. Uh, and week six was to start a like, start gentle jog. So it's all moving kind of to plan, which is nice. Okay, so we're at week six now, and there's nothing significant to report really. Um, 
I'm still making improvements. I've seen a lot of benefit from those isometric contractions um, with relation to the uh, AMI, the arthrogenic muscular inhibition um, that I talked about last week. But one thing I do want to talk about is um, the fact that I've now stopped using ice. So I'm sure you'll all remember, like back in GCSE P and A level P, whatever, we used to get told that when you get an injury, ice it and elevate it. And the idea behind the ice is to do with vasoconstriction and vasodilation. So um, when you apply ice or cold temperature to the area of an injury, the theory is that the body pulls all the blood away from that injury, reduces the swelling in that process. And then when you remove the ice and the blood vessels dilate again, new fresh blood with new nutrients, white blood cells, whatever, flood to the wound and speed up the healing process. But actually, new research has shown that perhaps that isn't the case. And actually, what I've been reading over the last week is that with the two things of inflammation and swelling, ice can actually uh, inhibit the recovery. So with inflammation, um, everybody knows you get an injury, it swells up. That's no different whether it's uh, a ligament, a muscle or a bone. Um, and what you get with that swelling is white blood cells and a whole load of other chemicals that I don't quite understand but are beneficial in uh, promoting the healing process. So I know that in the case of bone there are things like macrophages which uh, destroy all the dead tissue, um, osteoplasts which start the bone repair process. There's loads of things going on there anyway. But when you restrict blood flow, as in with ice, you're restricting the ability of your body to bring those healing components to the area of the wound, slowing down recovery. And furthermore, with swelling, which is like a longer term thing, the old theory with the ice would be that with the blood vessels constricting, you're pulling away the swelling from the area too. But the part of your body that removes the swelling is the lymphatic system. And what promotes lymphatic drainage is movement. So not being isolated in a brace for however many weeks, um, not keeping zero movement in the joint. So actually, what I might have been doing with recovery has actually helped the swelling to reduce. So yeah, that's pretty much up to week six. Next couple of weeks, um, I want to start doing more jogging, obviously. Um, I want to try riding a bike, that would be good. Um, but yeah, just more returning to normal function. So I'm going to carry on with the isometric things and the very slow, controlled uh, single leg squats that I just showed. Um, yeah, progress. Okay.